Here we go. I literally can't look at you. What's the problem? All right, you need to stand up and show how Vinny showed up. I'll stand up when I'll stand up after the halftime show. (laughs) I thought it looked sharp. I like that's why I. You look like you're showing up to coach. Can you You look? How bad did it look? I know it looks nice, but you look like you're showing up to coach. Can you put a camera on me? Yeah, yeah. There you go. You've been watching too much. Ted. You've been watching too much Ted Lasso. Huh? You've been watching too much Ted Lasso. Oh, you know what? I do feel like Ted Lasso. <laughs> you look like Ted Lasso. Okay, let me tell you what happened. I'll tell you exactly what happened. Okay. It's it's a little too cool for shorts. It is too cool for shorts. And it's yeah. too hot for jeans. Mm. And I can't find any of my shirts because Auntie has who knows where she put everything. So we have a new woman. So this this woman came to us. We have a new woman. No, we, a no, woman I comes I've, to the house. I backed up, Vinny. So. Uh, someone we know came to us and said, my aunt needs to make extra money every week. And and we needed laundry done. And we needed laundry done. Well, she actually said she could do your laundry. And you were against it. I was against it at first. And, um, and I secretly do keep my stuff in my room, the stuff that I want hung. But she does sure. your stuff, Cassie's stuff, Maddie's stuff. Maddie loves it, by the way. Maddie's it's the greatest stuff. thing ever. And you just can't find your stuff. But I yes. know when I find it, it's going to be clean. Yes, yes. Because she has decided to put it in different places. It is it is a little daunting Yeah, um, to find the stuff. But I will tell you something. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy it. Because now today, I didn't have time to go hunting. Here's right. the funny part. <clears throat> she has all my nice Michigan gear yeah. is in Cassie's room. Yes. And, and then I went, Cassie said, it's mine. I went to get my sweatshirt and Cassie goes, hey, 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 hey. I go, <laughs> Cassie, it's mine. It's my sweatshirt. There is no hey, 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 hey. I own that sweatshirt. And um, I took it. So, but well, then- she's been wearing Maddie's stuff too, because Maddie's stuff has been landing in her realm. And then my stuff that I did have washed landed in Maddie's room and Maddie happily put it right in her drawers. So, do you, do you, what? Yeah, and she's still. Do you think the table's an inch too high? No, I don't think the table's an inch I feel, too high. I think I've, it's an inch too high. I love them. Well, yeah, we got new tables at the restaurant. We are very close to having our grand opening. Very close. I think he has these feet up too high. Okay, all right. We'll anyway, so that's why I'm dressing a coach. And mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, it, it, everything's clean. It's just not where I need to be right now. That's all. Right, right. And so we'll figure that part out. But I also thought, well, they're only going to see me from the waist up. Right. That's and mm-hmm. and I feel good. I am now twelve days. No, is that true? I am twelve days into my diet. You look good. I am definitely losing weight. Yeah, you look um, good. Yeah, I mean, it, it's. I feel good, and I have to tell you something. I'm more energized. That's good. Yeah, I think I think I have a bread thing. I think bread makes me. Lethargic and fat. And fat yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Fat. fat. It does make some lethargic and fat. Yeah. Uh, well, so why don't we get this out of the way? All right. Well, you know we're brought by Misunderstood Whiskey. That's our sponsor. Misunderstood Ginger Spice Whiskey. If you're going to drink, I'm telling you, I can't say enough about it. Mm-hmm. Because I do love it. And now, I said last week, there's a couple of drinks coming. You know, when you put a little ginger in your whiskey, mm-hmm. it makes it a whole different treat. Right. Right. And uh, I'm going to ask Alex. I don't know. At what temperature whiskey freezes? It must freeze at some temperature. Right. I'm going to ask him to freeze some ice cubes. Because mm. you're not allowed to drink and drive. But I think you're just suck a couple mm. cubes. I think that is drinking and driving. So we celebrated Father's Day last night. I do not drink and drive, for the record. Yeah. And But get, get a hand of this. Get some of this. New drinks coming. Uh, I always talk about my favorite drink here. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gold Rush. All misunderstood ginger whiskey. Distilled originally right here in New Jersey, now made uh, in Kentucky where all the great whiskeys are made. So get some. What do you want to say about that? So we celebrated Father's Day last night because on Sunday um, we were on a soccer field in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and Maddie had to work. Yep. So last night we sat around and we had dinner together as a family and we celebrated Father's Day and we did a group gift to you. Um, we are taking Vinny to go see the Arsenal Man United game, friendly. But then Cassie did her own gift in addition. 
And who did she reach out um, to hopefully, well, maybe. It's so sweet. It's so stinging sweet. She wrote a letter Mm -hmm. to Paul McCartney Mm -hmm. and asked Paul McCartney if he would come sit and talk to me. Yes. And she offered her entire life's savings to get Paul McCartney to come talk to me. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't come, let me say this right now, Mm -hmm. because I've known Paul for a long time. Mm. They go way back. Way back. It was so sweet. And she said in the letter, yeah, he, my dad tells me all about your music and how the process you went through. Because, you know, I'm a big Paul McCartney fan. <laughs> now, listen, I don't think Paul McCartney's going to take her up on the offer. Um, and if he does come, I don't, I hope he doesn't take that. She's got a thousand bucks saved up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It would be odd to watch him talk to me and then look at Cassie and go, where's my payment? <laughs> yeah. uh, but if he comes, I'll be over the moon. He's in and around New Jersey a lot. Yeah. Because his wife Nancy, is from New Jersey. Nancy Schofield. Shuffle? Shuffle? Chacarelli? I don't know what it is. No, it's Shuffle. Shuffle? Nancy McCartney. Yeah, Nancy McCartney. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so it'd be great. <clears throat> he just had a birthday. Yeah. I think he just turned 80. Did he turn 80? I think he turned 80. And um, Mick Jagger's turning 80 as well, and he has a six-year-old. Mm-hmm. Paul McCartney mm-hmm. is the greatest musician and composer of all time. Mm-hmm. Of all time. I'm saying it right now. Of yeah. all time. Nobody even comes close. Yeah. The amount that that man has produced, written, as a Beatle, as an independent artist, other artists. No, wouldn't you say that's true? I mean, he's the GOAT. He is legitimately head and above everybody. And it's, there's great artists out there. Springsteen, great. Bon Jovi, great. But McCartney for so long. Right. Now, I would tell you the greatest live artist. The greatest live artist. It's... Bruce Springsteen. Right, right, right. Yeah, he's a great. He's a, the greatest to see. Live. Funny you should say that because Paul McCartney just came out and said, because Bruce Bruce Springsteen, you're doing all these marathon concerts now. Essentially, everybody has to do them. Everybody's doing. Bruce Springsteen set a bar. Everyone has to meet. Mm-hmm. I've never seen Mick Jagger live, and he looks like he'd be a lot of fun. Right. But Springsteen's so good. Anyway, that's what she did. She reached out. Now, Bruce, Cash will also give you a grand to come see. Right. Him. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Or Bon Jovi. Mm-hmm. Um, now it's open all three. Yeah. And oddly, Tracy Chapman. Uh, <laughs> I, wonder where she, I wonder where she is. I don't know, but I figured a thousand might mean something to her. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, she hasn't been around. She hasn't had she hasn't anything in like a long time. In a long time. Yeah. I think these artists that get the one hit wonders, they go off and they produce albums and they write music for the people and they do other things. Right. Cause I, I can't imagine that Mary Chapman or Tracy Chapman is doing any mundane job now. She's doing something in the field of entertainment. She's a very talented individual. Well, I also think that perhaps what happens sometimes is people discover that they want to be in either music or acting, but they don't want to be front and center. Because that being front and center, some people thrive being front and center, as other people, they, they don't enjoy the attention. I enjoy it. I know you do. Too. I enjoy. I know you do. You know why I do? <laughs> Can I tell you why that is? Yeah. Ow, I've, I've, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I've, I've thought about it long and hard. It's because I'm an egomaniac. Mm, okay. <laughs> but you know, I got recognized at the soccer tournament by a couple of different people. Yes, you did, and you were very um, miffed with me that I didn't stop and bask in your glory with you because you said I got recognized, and I said I know. It happened, it happened a lot. Not it just, does happen a lot. And and, and and it's I'm very happy for you, but I'm in the middle of walking with a 10-year-old to a pool. At that particular point, you're not walking with a 10-year-old. At that particular point, you were walking with uh, beer. To okay, meet the you, 10-year-old. I try not to make yourself sound like mother of the year. Uh, so, but I also got recognized, I, you don't know this, on the way after the last game on Sunday, I went to the car right away. Yeah, because you were pissed off. I was very pissed off. Mm-hmm. And I went to the car. I had to get away because I know me. Mm-hmm. I know me. And I said, I'm not going to be able to hold my tongue. I'm going to say something. And, it's gonna, and that's not, I, it wasn't that I didn't want to say something. I didn't want to take a three-hour car drive with all the judgment. <laughs> that's what stopped me. I'm like, okay, you need to say something. Say something. But then I said, ah. But then I got to deal with it. I think we need to back up. Um, We were upset with something that occurred on the soccer field for our daughter. Correct. And we were upset for her. Yes. And 
you wanted to say something right in the moment. That's when things should be said. And I believe- Could you imagine if someone said to Hitler right in the beginning, ah, uh-uh, killing Jews is bad. Vinny. From day one. If they said no, because they all supported him. They're like, that's a good idea. No. And that's the problem. See, right away, if I were there, I would say, Adolf, Adolf, pump the brakes, pump the brakes, move into a gated community, start, okay? <laughs> Just, you can't start killing Jews. It would have been so much better. Am I wrong? How am I the bad guy? Okay. So, <laughs> right? I, I, I really, I cannot even believe that you just equated <laughs> the minor thing that happened on the soccer field with our daughter. No, no. I'm not equating him. I'm saying someone could have stopped him from a much bigger problem. Right. But however, however, using that same logic, I believe, I believe that when you talk to someone maybe a day or two later, after things have dialed down and- there's perspective. I'm scarier in the moment. Um, I'm better in the moment. You are. Sharper. No, no, you're not. And <laughs> you're not. You might believe you are, <clears throat> but you're not. <clears throat> and you don't think I'm good in the moment? No. Why? You are much better when you are not mad. You are much more effective when you're not mad. Well, you are a clear communicator. You can clearly speak. You can get your point across and have some kind of resolution in the moment. And you know, I love you in the moment. You're as what is considered a hothead. Really? How would you like me to divorce (laughs) you right now? (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. yeah, I know. And that's why I walked away. It wasn't the car ride home. I kept, this is what I really thought to myself. Vicky always tells you, get away from it. So I walked away. No. And and I'm glad you did because I do still plan on having a conversation with that person. Yes. About what happened on the soccer field. But I strongly believe that it's best, A, when I can communicate what I want to say clearly mm-hmm. in without emotion. Because I fully believe when you communicate something without emotion, your point is better received. It's better taken. It's, yeah, I agree. And the other thing is, And Kathy Evita taught me this years ago. She said, years ago, she said, if I get an email that I'm upset about or text, I take 24 hours before I respond. I I never respond or email right back. I take 24 hours. And that is a good rule of thumb, I think. 24 Again, hours. Hitler could have used 24 hours. He could have. Reflect. He could've. He could've. reflect. Mm-hmm. All right. So can I say something about that? Uh, yesterday, I needed a little time. Mm-hmm. And I would say is if you're a parent watching, you should know if your kid is a fresh mouth. Yes. And need to have his little electronic bike taken away. Never before have I wished for someone's electronic bike to be stolen. So we were down the field at Normandy. And if you're watching and you're a middle town parent and your kid has an e-bike, go ask him. Did some maniac yell at you at the field? Because if it did, it was me. And then come see me. So there was two kids. They had these electronic bikes on the turf. Five million dollar complex. Signs that say no bikes on there. Because they ripped the turf up. Yeah. And then you can't replace the turf. So as an adult, I went over to the kid. I said, hey, I said, can you not put the bike on the turf? Just leave it outside. Why? So he gets fresh for a couple of minutes. And I finally said to him, why don't you call your father? Have him come down and talk to me. Now, he gets the bike off the field and then tells another kid to keep the bike off the field. And I think that's golden. Now, another kid had his bike on the field. I said to him, hey, guy, you know, your bike, they ruined the field. And he goes, oh, I'm so sorry. And he moved the bike right away. And they left later. So polite. Now, that same kid, the first one, at the end of it, him and his friend are doing donuts on the turf in front of me. So I went over and I yelled, I said, get the bikes off the field. All right, now, you know, I spent seven years of my life yeah, yeah, yeah. trying to get those fields built for the kids in Middletown. Mm-hmm. And this fresh mouth, snotty little 13-year-old or 14-year-old, if it was my kid, if I, if my kid talked like that, mm-hmm. and I approached the kid so nice at first, yeah. if my kid did that, the bike would be gone instantly. I would sell that bike instantly. I would give it away. And I would put my foot to quote my father so far up that kid's ass, he'd have a bubble on his head. Mm-hmm. Because that... He was so arrogant and rude. And I then called the ex-mayor My. and said, you had stopped them because they're going to get ruined. Yeah. And the thing about getting those fields ruined, 
Those aren't something you can replace tomorrow. No. You can't just go to the, the company. The company, the town doesn't have a half million dollars laying around mm-hmm. to put a new turf cover on. Those fields are under two years old. Yeah. And they're going to get destroyed. And this is the thing. Parents and adults, we need to say something. Well, that section of town is like wealthier section of our town. Yeah. And so a kid having an electric bike at that. How much is an electric bike? About eight thousand dollars. No, eight hundred, a thousand dollars. Three to eight thousand dollars. You think Three that to much? A thousand dollars. I mean, you can get lower ones for like fifteen hundred. Fifteen. But a really good one, middle town, three thousand. Either way, I take them too. I said to Vicky, I said, yeah. Okay, you're a fourteen year old kid, and you're getting your fourteen year old kid an electric bike. Why don't you just tell him, be fat, be fat, don't ride a bike, become as fat as you can, you, you, you piece of crap, because that's what you're going to be. You're just a no good piece of junk. You're garbage. So just be fat. That's what you're telling your kid. Well, I just think, I mean, super entitled kids, right? Super, super entitled. Super entitled kids. Being fresh. Just really, it, it really is. So um, I was afraid of every adult when I was young. Mm-hmm. Every adult. Mm-hmm. Not afraid. Respectful. My, Were you respectful? Yeah. Okay. Every adult around. I was And then mm-hmm. I just, it's infuriating. My throat's gone. So let's talk. Okay. So Noah and Sophia reminded me of this, and I actually read it just this morning, and I was horrified for them. There is a five-person submarine that goes down and looks at the Titanic. Yes. And they are missing. They are missing, and they have, what is it, 92 hours left of oxygen? 92, right? 96 total, I thought, not left. No, I thought it was left, right, Noah? Sophia? Somebody? Listen, Anybody? I'm going to tell you something. They don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Oh, okay. 40 hours of breathable air left. I told you. 40 hours of breathable air. And they're searching frantically. I don't know what that search would look like. You would need some other deep diving device. But even finding the device... I think the Titanic is down there, right? It, so now you got to figure out a way to cable it and bring it up. And there's all kinds of problems with that. How far down is the Titanic? 300 feet down? Is no, it? deeper. 13,000 13, feet below the surface. 13,000 feet below the surface. Holy moly. You can't just yank that thing to the su- surface because there's all kinds of pressure. And I, I don't know anything about it other than if you bring it right up, I think that could be a problem. Now, they're in a pressurized container. Maybe it wouldn't. But... You know, their air, while they have 40 hours of breathable air, it might be that the air starts to degrade. And so as the air degrades, they may suffer other right. decision-making errors and things of that nature. It's tragic. It's so scary. So to give, let's get some conceptualization. How 13,000 feet, what does that equate into miles? Two and a half miles. Two and a half miles? Why don't you... Annoying. It's it's under two and a half, but it's it's close to two and a half. <laughs> two and a half miles. Sure. Two point four six. Two point four six. Thank you, Sophia. How far? Two point four six miles. What did I say? Two and a half. And I said that without without even checking with Vinny. You're I mean, so Google. annoying. Vinny, Vinny. Uh, so that yeah, that is far. That is far. Wow. Now let me ask you guys, because um, I I read it in the the article that I was reading. The, the, the headline said that the submarine has Taurus on it, but then in the article it said it was a five-man sub that has enough for uh, one captain and four crew members. So is it just five people, and are those crew members tourists, or are they all just a, um, the crew of the sub? It, it's, it was a very misleading article that I read. That says who the people are. There's a British businessman. I, I don't know. I, I don't think they, no, they don't work on it. They it, don't work on it. Okay. There's a and businessman, then, a billionaire, a diver, a CEO of some company. How much did it cost to do it? Because oh, it I looks think it's like, kind of like the same when the teacher was on that rocket ship. I think that was what, the 80s? Oh. Uh, so where they okay. would select somebody for these expositions. Gotcha. And then, okay. Yeah. You know, Wow. And so, you know, here's the thing about this, too. How so, unlucky. Are you seriously checking social media right now while we're doing this? 
Uh, I am a teenage girl. You are a teenage girl. And I don't like how you judge me. How much is it? $250,000. Holy shit. How much? For an eight-day trip. $250,000 for an eight-day trip. That's what they paid. Mm-hmm. Wow. Man, that is a lot of money. Wow. But wow. I mean, I don't know. To go, I would... I, I, I would never do that. We took scuba diving lessons at Dossel's and I freaked out in the 10 foot pool and thought I was going to get the bends. And that was the last time that we did scuba diving. Mm -hmm. So I remember that very clearly because I wanted to scuba dive. So you went out and said, let's buy all the gear. And we spent $3,700 <laughs> in gear, got into a six foot pool of water and said, yes, yeah, that gear is going to sit in our garage and we still have the gear. We still have it. it, it that, that's the video that's coming very soon. Mm -hmm. A video of all the things we purchased that didn't even open the boxes. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't wait. It's going to be so funny. We're shooting that tomorrow now. Um, so, uh, yes. Yeah, so, but I mean, in that pool, I got down in the, the deep end of that pool with the gear on yeah. and it freaked me out so badly. Yeah. And we did. I really enjoy it. I, you should definitely do it. I don't want to. Um, I like snorkeling. You stay up top. Right. You look down below. Yeah, you don't really snorkel. You swim. I look. I look. And I put my head in the water. But you know, no, you don't. You put your eyes in the water. I can't get my ears wet. My, my <laughs> ears get wet. They, I get an earache for days. Yeah, you know, uh, that's maybe why we should have never brought that gear. Uh, so... <laughs> The whole, if I had known that. Yes, but that would freak me out. That would freak me out to go that far. Well, here's the other thing that's so scary about the sub. Now, the sub is missing for two days already, right? <clears throat> and it's roughly two days. And listen, it took 57 years to find the Titanic or whatever it was. The Titanic was not found for a very long time. Now, it's a little different. And then we didn't know where to start looking for the Titanic. We had a general area, but hundreds of mile grid this should be a much tighter grid however finding something you don't know it could be a mile of course could be it could be a quarter mile of course it's not like you can see that far right. under the ocean so the deepest rescue that they've ever done was in 76 and it was only a thousand feet so i mean I, I how scary for them listen <clears throat> how scary uh, and this is why this is why I will never go on a submarine. There's so many scary things you shouldn't do. I, I jumped out of a plane. The guy that I jumped out of a plane with, mm -hmm. it was me and my son, my son and I did it. You gave it to for my birthday. You were trying to kill me. And the guy that my son was tethered to died in a subsequent skydiving accident. That's so crazy. And, um, you know, at Cross Keys Airport. And I think he was competing. He right, that right, crazy right. Stuff. But, um, you know, it's it's three days missing right now, and you know what you really have to hope is that this that the thing surfaced somewhere and it's floating in the Pacific or in the Atlantic, and it's it just it, it lost communications. That's what you really got to hope for is that this thing is up on top of the water and the people are okay, mm -hmm. but they're incommunicado. Right. And it could be that. That would be great to find that out, right? Right. Uh, but it might be a long time, and it, it certainly, you know, we're hoping for the best. Uh, anyway. So scary. It's very scary. There's so many There's so many ways to be taken out, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, last week when I did the Uber thing, you know, people are writing online, they're saying, Uber drivers have their picture there. I right, listen, nobody says, let me see the picture, and then you. Right. Right. And, and even that doesn't matter right. because a guy that wants to do something nefarious, yes. it could be him anyway. Mm -hmm. Sending the picture to your mother, mm -hmm. send a message to the guy. Mm -hmm. It says, I'm on to you. It mm -hmm. would scare you. Right. It would scare you out of it. Well, did you, you don't know what happened at the soccer tournament. We couldn't fully talk about it because it scared all the girls and I didn't want to bring it up to Cassie. So one of the... You know, the girls were, um, there was three teams from the same soccer organization there. And so they're running through the hotel because the hotel was all a lot of soccer people at this big tournament. And one of the girls was either alone or with only one other girl. 
It, oh, I'm sorry. She was with one other girl. Um, a man opened the door and said, come in my room. Mm-hmm. That's why we left. And why didn't you? We should have just go beat the shit out of the guy. They called the police, Vinny. No, that's the problem. And the cops come and the guy goes, I didn't do that. So, but this then is what's wrong. Followed them to the elevator. And then they got on the elevator. Right. And then subsequent to that, why that was all happening, which I didn't know what was taking place. There was another guy that had his lights off on the first floor, just videotaping the girls. And all the moms are standing there. And he's like, it was like he thought he was invisible and no one could see I don't see know him. why anyone didn't tell me. No, well then what, so what happened was, is all the girls started breaking down and getting upset. I saw this, I saw the writing on the wall and I said, we are leaving, we are going. See, you, you made a mistake. You should have told us, we should have dragged him into the courtyard without a trial, without a hearing, beat him senseless and left him there. Okay. The cops came. And, and what so, did they do? What did they do? They arrested him. They, he got arrested. He got arrested. He would have been better arrested with a beating because nothing will happen to that guy unless they find smoking guns. I'm dead serious. A good old fashioned beating. No, do you agree? Okay, my mm-hmm. father and mm-hmm. his friends would have beat the living snot out of that guy. Mm-hmm. They beat the molest right out of you. Okay, and the thing about it is. If that kid's going to walk scot-free. The, the, the liberal progressive mindset, you have to be caught shooting somebody, and it can only be a Republican. If you got to be caught shooting a Republican, no, I'm sorry, a Democrat, and then you'll do time. This, uh, the cities are out of control. Well, that's why Cassie was so upset when we were leaving. You told me there was a weird guy. I thought you told me. You didn't tell me all that. Because I'm not going to repeat it again. Cassie was upset. All the girls were crying. Once all the all the girls started crying, it was all unfolding. I'm like, we were walking straight out. We we're going back to our hotel because we weren't staying at that hotel. Right. And so we had to go. But yeah, it's just there There are. Why that hotel was the first one saw that. I said to you, I don't like the name of that hotel. The pedophile motor court. I thought, I don't, I don't, <laughs> sounds sketchy. <laughs> sounds sketchy. But see, this is my point too, right? Yeah. So you want to go prey on children. You go where the hunting is. Yeah. That's the problem. Of course there's pedophile there. Right. They know there's a soccer tournament, book a room. Well, don't you remember when Maddie was dancing? Do you remember that story when Maddie was dancing? Tell me. So Madison used to dance competitively um, for Catherine Barnett School of Dance. And... We were out in Pennsylvania again, and Catherine at the one dance tournament, competition, I should say, pulled us all aside and said to all the parents and the children, and she pointed, she did not care. I liked Catherine a lot until her I husband- I love Catherine. Until her husband came on board, that's when it went downhill. But she pulled us all aside and said, you guys see that guy over there? And we're like, yep. And she goes, you see him? And we're like, yeah, stay away from him. He went to jail, he was a pedophile, and he came back and he worked for his mom at a dance school. Yeah. And was at a dance competition with girls. What? And you see the other guy? <laughs> what? <laughs> Tom, what are you gonna say? <laughs> see, I'm telling you, I've said it forever. And that's why you have to tell moms, you should not be putting your kid in your coach's car by herself. No. Ever. Doesn't matter who it is. No. Because you don't know. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and as a coach, I never wanted to be alone no. with any kid. Um, and, and that's my daughter's there yeah. or another adult because it's just too, it, it, too, big, too bad a world. Um, that, that soccer tournament, I hope that guy, see, the only thing, the only time something will happen is if they launch an investigation my, and they find other tracks. But human trafficking out of control. It is out of control. Our cities are out of control. Mm-hmm. Out of control. I have to go to New York tonight, as you well know. Right. And where I'm going is relatively, there'll be a lot of cops in the area. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I, I'm telling you, what's happening in San Francisco yeah. is out of, it's it's just, it's nuts. So let's, let's, do we have anything funny to talk about? We have Chris Christie running for president from the great state of New Jersey. Yes, I can't believe it. Are you excited about that? He was a very smart guy. No, I, he is a very smart guy, and he was very personable when we met him at the Rutgers game. I've met him five times. Yeah, you've met him several times. I've hung out with him. Yeah. 
he's a very bright guy. Right. He's he is a very bright guy. He's brash, right. he's outspoken. But I like Chris Christie. Right. I do. I think he's a good choice. I, uh, him and DeSantis uh, would be who I would pick right now out of the Republican side, out of Democratic side. Well, there's that. Um, there's that uh, governor down in is it South Carolina or. He seems a pretty good candidate. Well, the my, mayor of Miami, Cuban American. Yes, but uh, he seems to be running just to be running against Trump. It seems. Well, I don't think that we're necessarily. Uh, I don't think his profile's high enough. No, right? if you're if you're the mayor of if you're the mayor of even a city, that's that's still a tough a uh, tough nut. Bloomberg to, couldn't get it done. He didn't. Bloomberg was as big as it gets, and I mean, he has a ton of money. Right. Everyone knew the name. Who would you take from the Democrats? Uh, you like Newsom or no? No, I do not like Newsom. Do you like Joe he Biden? He is so arrogant. He is so arrogant. So arrogant. Um, well, Joe Biden seems like a very sweet man, but I think his time has come. Okay. Kam- Kamala? I don't like her. Um, Bernie Sanders? Um, I think he's way too far left for me. I need a moderate. I need a moderate Democrat. Uh, who's a moderate Democrat? Uh, Who, who's announced on the Democrat side? Give me the give me the top on both sides. We'll make our predictions and our yeah. picks. Biden, Williamson, Kennedy. Who, oh, Kennedy. Yeah. People like Kennedy. I don't know anything about Where's him. Where's Kennedy from? Uh, Massachusetts. Is he from Massachusetts? I think that's where all the Kennedys are from. And which Kennedy is he? Bobby Jr. Bobby Jr. He's jacked up. He's worked out. Uh, Anti-vaxer. I, I just think that the Kennedys have. He'll bring some bad juju to the office. I just don't, I don't think the Kennedys should, they bring bad juju. Ah, come on, man. Yeah, they do. <laughs> they bring some bad juju to the office. I think, but this Kennedy guy, they say, they say a lot of Republicans are like him. Oh, really? See, yeah, because I think somebody in the middle has to get the job done. Well, I don't know if he's in the middle. I don't know anything about the guy. Yeah. No. I know nothing about him. Mm-hmm. I know that I could never take, I would not like that pompous jackass from California. I think he's awful. I awful. think he's terrible. Uh, DeSantis, I like. I don't like what he did with Disney. No, mm-hmm. uh, I don't like what you know. I don't like the Disney thing. You shouldn't have taken Disney on. No, let Disney do what it does, and let the marketplace tell Disney yeah, what's yeah, good yeah. and bad. Yeah, I, agree. Um, I, I do like Chris Christie on the Republicans. I do. I, I think he get a good, good shot. Um, you know what I don't like about Chris Christie though is that um, when he gets mad, he's too much of a hothead. Maybe that's why I like him. <laughs> <laughs> I think that he I think that when you're in that we need high office guy. no listen I don't think anyone stupid runs no matter no matter what people will say like oh he's so stupid yeah I hate it's the a, stupid crap I do too because if you're a Harvard grad I'm sorry you're not stupid you're not stupid you're not stupid Joe Biden is not stupid none of them are stupid do you know how hard it is to hide five million dollars <laughs> Well, Hunter Biden just, they said he just made some plea deal for a misdemeanor. Hunter Biden was spotted at the Hershey tournament. All right. now. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So who else is running for the Democrats? On the Democrat side. That, that's all it's listing right now. These three are the main ones. Biden. Well, because it's also very unpopular to uh, yeah, you're not a, sitting, get a, lot, yeah. a sitting president. That's right. I just realized you're not going to hear anyone running. It's people lining themselves up. We know Phil Murphy's lining himself up. Right. We know Newsom's lining himself up. Right. We know um, that might be it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm sure there's others. Uh, Sanders, perennial loser. Right. Hillary's lining herself up. Perennial loser. Um, she'll never win. Um, is Elizabeth Warren throwing her hat back in the ring? She will, If she is, she's an idiot. She could never win. She's so bad. I yeah. don't like her. I do not like Elizabeth Warren. Um, I think that, you know, uh, intelligent wise, Phil Murphy is certainly an intelligent candidate, certainly mm-hmm. a bright guy, um, would probably have to moderate some of his stances in the general, but he's positioned well to win a Democratic primary. My. Uh, and that's what they do. You know, the Republicans will align with the far right, the Democrats will align with the far left. And then once they get the nomination, they can kind of moderate to try and win the uh, the middle, yeah. and that's that's the game, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, Newsom versus Murphy, 
in terms of a primary, mm-hmm. Newsom has had a little more exposure. He's had a lot of press. A lot of press. I mean, I mean, but Murphy ran the Governor's Association, right? Ran the Democratic Party. He knows fundraising, right? He's a and Murphy's a bright guy. I mean, I would just like to see somebody bring the country together. Who is the most popular president we've ever had, Sophia? Most, most popular. Who had the most popular? Okay, before you say it, I'm going to give you the top five. Okay, okay, but we have to go to the top five and. We'll need a little research. Okay, when you're ready, who do you think your top five are? I have no idea. I don't follow politics. Okay, top five most popular presidents of all time. Well, you... I, I thought it was Kennedy before I looked this up. What'd you say? That's Kennedy because he was an actor. Like he was in this. Uh, I can't. But Kennedy wasn't an actor. Wait, no, no, no. I wanted to give the numbers. Uh, wait, 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 wait a minute. Did you think? Did you think that Kennedy was an actor? Popular. It was the first time they aired. On it was the was it the the debates it was the yeah and he was so handsome TV. exactly and he was so handsome Kennedy. yeah yes so handsome mm-hmm. okay I'm gonna give you the top five I think the top five not in order these will be the top these will be in the top five okay and this is with an historical review mirror I, I wanted to know the most popular president presidents during their time oh during their time not. Not in hindsight, not looking back. Right. Who won the who, most electoral votes? Who who kept the American people the happiest? During their tenure. During their tenure. That's really what you want to model after. Okay. Like, you know, somebody that has a 30% approval rating for the majority of their their term is stinky. Okay. You ready? Yeah. In the top five mm-hmm. will be. But it's with a bend of it because he died in office. In the top five of all time, while in office, it'll be Roosevelt Franklin. It'll be likely Ronald Reagan, Mm -hmm. Kennedy, maybe Theodore Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Potentially Obama. Perfect. I was thinking Obama. Who are they? Um, th- those are all high up. Oh, and Washington yeah. was beloved. Oh, I mean, of course. Yeah, well, he was. He was, yeah. Washington was probably number one. Um, Aber- it's Lincoln, Kennedy, Washington, Theodore Roosevelt, Jefferson. Jefferson. Wow. Is that one? Jefferson. Okay, so first of all, let me tell you, for them to leave, name them again. Um, Lincoln, Kennedy, Washington, Jefferson. Oh, wait, this is different. Lincoln, Kennedy, Washington, Roosevelt, Jefferson. Okay. Jefferson's an interesting one. That makes sense. Let me tell you one thing. Lincoln does not belong on that group. No, he got assassinated. Well, he, half the country hated him. Yeah, that's what but, I mean. But it's an interesting thing. You see, Lincoln saved the Union. Historically, yes. But the North never recognized the break. So if you look at the way the North looked at it, then one half of the country hated him. My own. And one half loved them. And even if you look at it after having almost won the war, the war was not over. Uh, Lincoln was killed mm-hmm. before it was over, right? It happened before Appomattox, right? And so, and Appomattox wasn't the end of the war. That was Lee's surrender. So, it's a little technicality there, right? So, you can't put Lincoln in for, the, for what you're asking. Right, well, also- And then you would put Reagan in. For what you're asking. But do you also recognize that all of them, besides Kennedy, who did not get to finish his term, the TV was invented. Right. So mass information could be put out. A more- Interesting. Worldwide newspaper circulation was happening. Better radios were happening. So information sharing- changed yeah it did you're 100 so right. the information sharing is vastly different and then any current president is up against the onslaught of social media yeah so you're, you're making a very good point yeah so i mean it's it's really you're comparing apples to oranges because once people were able to really see like back when lincoln was president you would hear from so-and-so 
Like right now, my mom and her friends sit in a bar sometimes, and they hypothesize politics. Mm. And I've heard some of this about <laughs> Yes. <laughs> but that's just... There'll edge. never be another sitting popular president because of what you're saying. Yeah. Because if Link, if social media existed during Kennedy, yeah. they would have cracked him having affairs right. right away. Yeah, you're right. And Teddy Ru- and Franklin Roosevelt, you think about it, and Trump would have called him the cripple, the crip. He would have been all over. He would have. He's so terrible. But he would have. Yes, he would he have would. called him, he's a crip, he can't walk. He, you know, he would have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and they would have attacked and attacked and attacked, and that's what drives it apart. And I think we're, we're coming to a, to a nice little end here, right? Yes, I do. Do you want to go further? No, no, because I actually have to go take uh, Draco to the vet. I don't want anyone to misunderstand what I'm saying. This is the whiskey you want to get your hands on. I misunderstood ginger mm-hmm. whiskey. They should be sending us some stuff soon. They should be sending us some swag because we've been doing this for a while. For yeah. Them. And, um, and there are sponsors and I want more. I want to go look at the whole restaurant and set up how we want it. I love it. Okay. I'm so excited. All right. So uh, thank, thank you, you all very much. We love Good you. Night. We'll see you Bye. next Tuesday.